TIFU, by playing a game of, gay chicken, with my coworker. Obligatory, this didn't happen today, statement. It's actually been an ongoing situation for the past few months, and yesterday I lost. For context, I work as a server for a cafe and many of my coworkers speak Spanish. I do not. They have this running joke that I'm a part of, or the butt of. One of them will tell me, hey, go say some Spanish sentence to X. I go and say it. That coworker looks at me like I kicked a puppy, and the whole kitchen erupts in laughter. Rinse and repeat. Seemed like they got a kick out of it, so why ruin their fun? Well, a few months ago, this joke sparked a game of what I can only describe as, gay chicken. I was told to say something to a coworker we'll call B in the ensuing laughter. I was informed that I had said, you are very handsome. I want to touch your butt. But, you know, I'm comfortable with my sexuality. I went along with it. My thought process was, oh, you want to make this weird? I'll make this weird. So, I looked B in the eyes, winked and said, see, am I amor, in a sultry voice. Since then work has been filled with a series of increasingly romantic gestures. He started calling me baby, corazon, honey, etc. I did the same, and began making a heart shape with my hands every time I passed him. He would pucker his lips and make kissing noises, and I responded by writing small notes in Spanish to him. Saying things like, your eyes sparkle like the night sky. I should have known I was outmatched by his next escalation. As soon as I walked through the doors in the morning, B would hug me and start rubbing his face on my chest as he would softly meow. He was truly a master at this game. But I was in too deep. I played what would be my final move, and asked B to slow dance with me next to the dishwasher at closing time. We did not leave room for Jesus. On my way to work yesterday, I expected our contest of homoerotic brinkmanship was nearing a finale. I was prepared for the nuclear option, a kiss or at most some heavy petting. But what B did was barbaric. While I was dropping off dirty dishes in the back, he snuck up behind me and just fucking bit me. Not softly, either. There were teeth marks. I yelled at him. What in the goddamn hell are you doing? Of course, the kitchen staff thought this was hilarious. However, as I made my way back towards the dining room, I saw the cafe's owner look at me with her own, what the fuck? Expression. Apparently, the entire store had heard me. I don't think I'll ever forget the look in her eyes when I had to explain the reason for my outburst and the bite mark on my arm. It was full of equal parts confusion, disappointment, and exasperation. Too long did not read. My co-worker and I have been acting increasingly gay towards each other for months, as a joke of course. In the pursuit of seeing who would back out first, we probably broke countless rules about workplace PDA. It was all fun and games until yesterday, when he bit me. I yelled loud enough for the whole store to hear, and the cafe's owner demanded an explanation. I don't know if they'll ever look at me the same again. Really thought this was gonna end with, but we've been married two years now. I'm starting to think he might actually be gay. That's it, you have to jerk him off. Yeah you gotta marry him man, there's no other choice. Unless you're just gonna lose. I misread, he just fucking bit me, as, fucking me a bit, that would have really upped the ante. You might be the only one playing this game. R, suddenly gay. But not. As a joke of course, reite. Nobody tell him. Today I fucked up by giving my professor head. So I'm in a philosophy class this year and the topic of Jeremy Bentham came up. I, being a pretentious nerd and a lover of weird shit, know an awful lot about Bentham's death and the subsequent preservation of his head. My teacher is also a weirdo who's into shit like this so after class one sent him an email with a photo of the preserved head and some historical context. The professor responds with enthusiasm over this fucked up history, and I promptly forget about the whole thing. Fast forward to the next time I see him for class. The moment I walk in the door, my professor joyfully says in front of the whole class, Hey gay underscore commie underscore fucker. Thanks for the head the other day. With no explanation. Immediately the class looks at me shocked. I was getting weird looks for the rest of the day. Too long did not read. I sent my professor an email about a severed head in a jar and he thanked me in front of the class in less than ideal ways. My classmates now assume I'm hoeing for grades. Edit. Wow this really blew up. After reading the comments I realized I should clarify a few things. First off, my professor isn't a douchebag. He and I make jokes at each other's expense pretty much every class. He's a really nice guy and if I had felt at all uncomfortable about this I would have let him know. He wouldn't have said something like this if he hadn't known I'm down with this sort of thing. 
He's a great teacher and things like this have made learning philosophy bearable. Second, I'm not upset. This is gonna be awkward and probably result in a nickname but I'm fine with it, especially for the sake of a joke that good. That said I will likely have to keep explaining this situation to people, hence the foo. Mildly inconvenient, but absolutely worth it. Did you bring enough for the whole class? Was your professor aware of the double entendre? Now you have to send him a picture of a donkey so that next time he can thank you for giving him some ass. Now that head has to make an appearance in the room lol. Well I wanted to read about a blowjob. Sumi. Had us in the first half. Gif. Reads title and takes out dick. Reads post and quickly puts dick back and goes to wash hands. You should have shouted back. No problem. God. Underscore of. Underscore history 88. I was gonna surprise you with the ass next time if it's still in one piece. TIFU. By taking a sip up my wife's weed infused coffee. This happened a few months ago but is still a stark reminder to know your limits and take things slow, lest you're flung helplessly into the upside down where your brain ceases to function and you have to feebly text your wife for help from the bedroom. My wife, Amy uses medicinal weed to help combat anxiety. She uses small amounts throughout the day in order to steady her nerves. She has an extremely high tolerance, and has found that edibles have no effect on her, she can pop a 200mg gummy and feel nothing. Adorable me, on the other hand, Nibbles a 5mg, THC, CBD gummy and I'm on the edge of overthinking my entire life. Anyway, my wife's father smokes to help with various bodily injuries acquired throughout his life and often makes tinctures and infusions as experiments with potency. He, naturally, has a high tolerance as well. My wife's experiences with edible immunity seemed to intrigue my father-in-law and he began using her as a test subject to see if he could elicit any kind of psychological or physiological response. The idea of my gray-haired, bathrobe-clad, pop-in-law tinkering with pot potions in his kitchen is a hilarious visual in and of itself, but I digress. The day came and he divulged his perfect solution, or substance, I guess. A huge pad of knee-shaking, heart-bursting, ID-destroying, weed-infused butter. My wife kept this innocent-looking, yellow cube of mindfuck in our freezer for a few weeks, devising the proper time to utilize it. Then, on a lazy weekend, she decided to melt the butter in a cup of coffee and slowly sip the stuff while taking note of how she felt. This is where my stupid 5mg ass comes comes in. I'll just take a sip, I thought. Couldn't hurt, right? Just a lil, sip, followed by a beer or two. Enjoy my evening. I raised the mug to my lips and noticed the oily drops of liquefied fuck butter slicked to the surface of the brown liquid. I sipped. A tiny sip. A, this is hot coffee I'd better be careful kind of sip. This couldn't do more damage than the little gummy. I was wrong and there was no going back. My fate was sealed. We sat down to watch a movie with our kids. 30 minutes went by. 40 minutes. About an hour. Nothing. I felt completely normal. Nary a twitch or fuzzy sensation to speak of. My father-in-law called Amy to see how things are going. She'd finished the entire cup and felt nothing. She casually mentioned that I had a sip of said coffee a while back, and also felt nothing. There was a pause, then my wife's brow furrowed. No he's okay. She responded, her eyes shot over to mine in a confirming glance. Uh oh, I thought. That's probably not good. I'll keep an eye on him. She said jovially and said her goodbyes. It was shortly thereafter that everything changed. I began to feel my extremities go numb. When I moved my head, it seemed my eyes needed time to catch up. I blinked and took a deep breath. My heart sounded loud and throbbed in my ears. Its beating seemed to interrupt my breathing. I tried to play it cool. I shifted my weight on the couch, tried to stretch weakly to jostle the foreign vibrations out of my limbs. It was happening. I'd sipped more than I could swallow. I suddenly felt the urge to pee. I stood up, not saying a word, and pieced out of the living room. The old Irish goodbye. I found my way to the master bathroom and forgot why I'd gone there. I stopped, looked around for a moment, then stepped back into our dark bedroom. I stood there for a good five minutes, frozen, staring. I couldn't think. I wasn't sure what to do next. After a while I managed to pull out my phone and text my wife a pitiful. I'm feeling too much. Exactly what I wrote. She uses this phrase to torment me to this day, and stumbled to our bed. My wife is the best. She's a champ. She knew exactly what to do. She calmly left the kids to their movie, explaining that I was suffering from a migraine, laid next to me in bed, 
held my hand and stroked my hair, fitting of the little lost boy I'd become. Intensely introspective, rambling, occasionally exclaiming in a shaky voice, what did your dad do? It was horrible. The muscles in my legs felt as though they were firing and twitching of their own accord. I couldn't get a full breath as my heart's panicked pounding interrupted each inhalation. I couldn't entertain a thought or subject for more than a few sad seconds before my wife would have to prod me on. Staying in one place too long, dwelling on a subject for more than a few beats, would expose me to intense panic and introspection. I was Charlie Sheen high for hours, rocketing through the quantum realm at top speed. Raving about the follies of my misspent youth. Shouting then calm. Panicked then reassured. My wife never leaving my side. I slept for 11 hours, and in the morning experienced my first weed hangover. No headache, no nausea, no intense pain of any kind really. Just a fatigue like I'd never felt. Like I'd been clenching my ass cheeks and curling my toes for two days straight while glacier water was poured over my naked genitals. My wife, you ask? She never felt a thing. Nothing. The whole damn cup of chrome bubbled coffee had no effect on her infinitely nurturing form. I had the pleasure and embarrassment of recounting my ordeal to Amy's family a few weeks later. My father-in-law found it terribly funny that he'd almost cracked my psyche like an MK Ultra Psy-Op. Be careful out there folks. Have fun. Take advantage of new experiences when they're presented to you. But please, please remember to try just a little bit of that edible then, you know, wait an hour. TLRI took a tiny sip of my wife's coffee that contained a strong, weed-infused butter. Panicked, laid in bed like a corpse, hands crossed over my chest for hours as she stroked my head like a panicked infant. Is your Phil selling the MK Ultra butter, by chance? You are a good writer man, nice storytelling. Two things. Your wife sounds like a lovely person. I can't believe how high, sorry, her tolerance is. I can eat a 5 or 10 milligrams gummy and get pretty whacked. If she can do 200 milligrams and function, that's crazy. It reminds me of the time I ate the whole bag of my husband's gummy edibles not realizing they were edibles. And I have very low tolerance. Good times. You know when you tip a pan that has drippings in it from say roasting a chicken and all the fat, oil, settles in the direction of which way you're tipping. My guess is by tipping the cup to take a sip, you got all butter. I feel for you for sure, but I love me some weed butter. I'll put it on toast when I have cramps. Love 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 it. She never felt a thing. Nothing. Probably because you sipped it all off as it floated on the top. Man this sounds like the first time I took half a dab and couldn't fucking move for hours. My stoner brother told our parents I got my period and my mom came and laid in bed with me petting my head. The existential crisis I experienced though, holy shit. Never again tears of joy I can barely tolerate low dose gummies as well. I don't think people accurately represent just how scary weed can be. One of the first times I used it I went way overboard and the entire room was visually leaning left and right. My body felt like it was in a compress and my head was on an actual roller coaster. One of the scariest experiences of my life. Only reason I didn't completely panic was I knew weed couldn't kill you. Today I fucked up by doing myself through a wall. Literally. Usual it did happen today. I'm a content creator and truly love to make some solo videos when my hubby's away. So today I stick my suction cup dildo to my full length mirror door on my wardrobe. Everything is going great. Looks good in the camera I'm having a great time and decided let's go harder. I'm throwing my back into it really using my body to you get the idea. It was mere seconds into going to town I felt a wobbly that hadn't happened before. Ignoring it and backing up again I felt it again. Thinking that's a little weird. One last good thrust and through the wall we go. Yup the wardrobe was not built in rather added in and barely secured. So my MILF booty was no match and I backed up too hard thrusting the wardrobe through the plaster and me falling back onto the wardrobe just made for an extra lot of damage. Calling my landlord to explain was the most embarrassing conversation and went like, how did that happen? Question mark quote. Then, oh uh, well I ah uh, tripped and fell onto it, me. Hours later tradespeople arrive. I by then had picked up my little one and was distracted doing mother things, to hear the tradies mumble and giggle as they entered my room. One of them yells, so did you fall onto the dick? Oh shit. Not only did I now buy a new wall and new wardrobe but I left the evidence there in all its purple glory. I have never been so red-faced in my life. Too long did not read.
using a suction cup on a wardrobe pushing wardrobe into wall lying to landlord how it happened to out myself by leaving the evidence attached to the wardrobe. Okay. Less than claps hands. Rubs them together it's time to make some lemonade. Step 1. Upload video to your of. Step 2. Send link to tradesmen. They have to subscribe to see the video. Step 3. Profit. Sigh, everything leads back to OnlyFans now. This is could be one hell of an advertisement for your content. Thinly veiled advertisement. Reite. So, little one, is a child. Cause I first thought you were referring to the dildo. So this is what happens when plaster meets a brick house. You stuck it to the full-length mirror door? And weren't cut to shreds when you fell through it? 